Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it's August 29th of uh, 2021. And I wanted to make this about, uh, before I started doing, well, before I was doing, it's so confusing, you know. I was going to say before I started doing YouTube videos, but, uh, which would be when YouTube started, what, 2005? I was doing live streaming, you know, before there was a YouTube, before there, uh, so it's kind of, kind of confusing, but I blogged in written form, which you can see here on the screen, but even this, this is 2010, <clears throat> I was uh, blogging in, uh, 1982 before the before the World Wide Web even the internet existed but the World Wide Web didn't but uh, to the subject which people say I have trouble staying with um, let me go back um, in time I should do some I never do effects, you know. Uh, I was born in 1941 um, in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Catholic family. My, well, my father, my mother, and myself. My father's family was uh, seven boys and three girls. Um, Catholic family, of course. Uh, I was an only child. Uh, now, my my father's side of the family. Uh, wow, <laughs> yeah. I have I don't how many cousins. 60, 80, 100 from that side of the family. I don't know. A bunch. <laughs> uh, now, my mother's side of the family, that she just had a brother. And he married, and his wife, who would, would be my aunt, one of my aunts, but the aunt from my mother's side, her name was Willie, and she was not a Catholic. She was like a Baptist or something. And she was just an absolute wonderful, you know, person. I mean, just, uh, I'll say, a saint, you know. Um, of course, her husband, my mother's brother, uh, he was, uh, an alcoholic. I could, one of the first memories that I have, well, not first, I got, because I have little clips of little, you know, but when I must have been like five years of age or four or something like that, uh, that would be right after, must have been about five, I think four. Why does that matter, Jim? I don't know. Why are you, buddy? Wait a minute, I'm sorry. But, um, one of my first memories is that, oh my, it was right after World War II, my father was the only one of the boys uh, who did not serve in the military. His six brothers were all in the military in World War II. My father wasn't, because my father and mother worked as went to California with me as a baby and uh, worked in the shipyard building Liberty ships. And uh, so um, my mother's brother, I think I saw him in some photographs, you know, that my mother had. I think I saw him in a army uniform. So he must have served for a little bit, I think. 
can't remember now. And I, my mother, you know, always wanted to show me, you know, pictures and talk about family. And I was, I was never, you know, it was like, uh, later I'm busy, you know, and I never got around to going through the pictures with her and maybe asking some questions. But I think he must have been in the army. Uh, that would have been Bill. Bill Stallsworth, my uh, mother's only brother. Um, so Bill married, the, you know, Willie, and she was just just a, a, a wonderful woman. She had a son born that was would have been my age, very close, maybe you know very close to uh, my age and the baby died almost right away and um, she was told by somebody and I think it might have been like you know I don't think she was told by any Catholic I think she was told by you know somebody in the Baptist church and maybe you know was because I know she, like I said, she was a wonderful woman, and uh, but she did come over a couple of times. But she was always nice, you know. She was, uh, she hated the Catholic Church, uh, and she came over. I remember on a couple of occasions she stopped by and she'd say, "You all should come." Of course, she knew we were all Catholic, and uh, you know, you should all come. Our, our church is having, and I remember the first one, first one I think was that a ex-nun was going to be speaking, and I guess this ex-nun uh, traveled across the United States, you know, going to Baptist churches, and uh, I'm sure she got a good turnout, you know, supposed, you know, ex-nun, and I'm sure the church, I'm sure, paid her, uh, or they did it with a collection thing. Maybe she got, you know, whoever as she made. I'm sure she made probably good money, because anyway, uh, Willie came over and said, "You ought to come. There's a next nun, you know." Not, not interested, you know. And she wasn't upset, you know. And she left and went to the event. And I remember another time she came. Uh, over and she said, "Oh, you guys should come. Our church is this an ex-Catholic priest, and he is uh, going to be talking about and telling about how." And then she went through this litany of things, you know, how the Catholic Church, you know, has guns in their basement, and how uh, how the <laughs> the Vatican and the Pope, how you know, how they're building a secret tunnel that's coming underneath the ocean to come over to the United States and then they can take over the, I mean, it was just all the garbage that, and I, we, I wasn't upset with, we, nobody, we weren't upset with her and she wasn't, and, and God bless her, she wasn't upset with us, she didn't like the, didn't like the Catholic Church and probably didn't like Catholics, but she had no problem with us at all, she loved us. Uh, and so anyway, she had a a hard life in a way. I really did because my mother's brother was an alcoholic, and he now they had three children. Okay, so when the one baby died, that would have been about my age. Then she had another one right away, and he was one year younger than I was. Billy, and then uh, they had Janet, you know, I don't know, a couple years, you know, and then they had Johnny a, a year or two or whatever, so they had three in the family, and uh, uh, so there's that. Now, uh, I blogged about subjects, as you can see. Now here's, which is, you know, I started in 1982, so this is, you know, 
2010 you're seeing on the screen. Well, you're not seeing it on the screen. Okay. This is, you know, uh, from 2010, so that's, but I was blogging before, you know, all the way back to 1982, and eventually, uh, well, I did it even when the World Wide Web came, and then eventually I just gave up, because everybody wanted to go to, you know, Facebook and all this, you know, but, one time, and I'm guessing I'm 80 now, so I'm guessing that I was probably maybe 10 years old because I don't remember, I mean, you know, the date or how old I was. Um, but my mother uh, dropped me off at, you know, Willie's place for me to spend the night, uh, you know, so that... Uh, Billy and, I could, Billy and I could play and do what we did. Um, I didn't do it very often. He stayed a few times at our place. He came over and stayed a few times over, well, just, I think usually when he came, it was like overnight. Wasn't very many times over all the years, but a few. Uh, and I had almost zero contact with my cousins on the Howard side, but they all knew each other because there was their families, uh, Catholic families, you know, were ten kids and that type, usually, you know, stuff like that. So they ended up going to, and they'd be in all grades in the different parishes, and then they'd get together and that kind of stuff. And also, I think I've talked about this before, uh, I think my father was the second oldest of the Howard children. And so I think he had an older brother, Joe, and then I think it was my father, I believe, and then the rest. And like I said, he was the only one who wasn't in the military. And I can remember a few times early on Everybody, you know, my my grandfather, uh, the Howard grandfather, my father's father, he passed away about like 1941 or 42. Uh, my mother, well, they had, my mother, my uh, grandmother, you know, they had a flag back then, they had a flag in their window and there were stars on it for each son. Could have been, there could have been, but you know, there could have been somebody that was in the waves or whatever, but basically, you know, they, it would hang in the window or on your door or something like that. And if one of the stars was gold, that meant that you were a gold star family, that, you know, you had lost, let's say again, it's, it's, you know, could have been a daughter, but, or, but so, but, uh, and, you know, after the war, all these, all my father's brothers came back from the military, and I'm sure they were all wanting, you know, they all talked about and their, you know, stuff, and I'm sure they all argued, you know, with each other. My, one was in the Marine Corps, I'm sure he said, he, you know, the Marines were the best, and several were in the Army, and one, I know one was in the Navy, and... Uh, Everybody was expected to go to Grandma Howard's place on Thanksgiving and eat, you know, and on Christmas Eve, and you would you'd be there. And then when midnight came around, then you know you would all go to midnight mass. And it, this was uh, this was like a require. I mean, this was like a requirement. I mean, it wasn't having anything to do with religion or anything. It was like you know. Uh, and two now, I was in the older bunch of, you know, because I was born a few months before World War II started for the United States. And there were, you know, a few others born, very few of us. But then after the war ended and all my father's brothers came, you know, and got married or were, uh, some of them were married, you know, uh, they started producing kids. So when you go to these, you know, 
my father, my, my, my mother, you know, was like, uh, in fact, I think she would have loved probably to go. We went a few times for the Thanksgiving and the Christmas events. And right away, my father didn't want to go, you know, anymore to them. And this was like, this got him a lot of the family, you know, his brothers were not happy, I guess, and probably others, that we were the, like the only ones who didn't show up for Thanksgiving and the Christmas Eve event. And I, my father never said anything, except I, I think I can give one example. My father never said anything, but I think he took good-natured ribbing when he went, when he got around his brothers after World War II. And maybe they were really, you know, a, young, a Catholic family, young, you know, seven, seven brothers, three sisters. I think there's probably a lot of competition and, you know, uh, stuff like that. And I think what happened, <clears throat> I don't think my father, I'm guessing, <clears throat> I don't think my father was, I think that uh, his brothers, like, probably were making comments you know, on Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve, that kind of stuff, like, you know, or, or else he was just, like, cut out of the conversation, you know, when they were telling stories about, you know, you know, like the one that my Vincent that was, ended up with 10 or 11 kids that he fought in the Pacific in the Marine Corps, and he came back really messed up because of what he had seen and what he had done. And he, he talked about, you know, using a flamethrower and uh, in the Pacific Island and stuff like that, he came back. But, so there would have been conversation that I think my father, you know, they, I don't think, you know, they were like family, but still I think young guys, you know, brothers, grown brothers, I think there would have been things said or maybe he just felt that way. and. One thing that reinforced that idea of mine was, I remember my father and I watching a John Wayne movie, and I, it was, I forget the name of it, I think it was like the story, you know, <laughs> made during World War II or whatever, I think, uh, or, or maybe shortly after, uh, where the Marines were on an island that the uh, Japanese attacked, and, uh, the entire small marine, because, it, you know, we weren't expecting war in real life. The marine detachment was, I think, was totally wiped out, or maybe a few of them were captured, you know, that a few of them surrendered, you know. And so but in this movie, at the end of the movie, maybe exaggerating here a little bit, you know, it's John Wayne and all the, the Marine Corps, you, you know, it's John Wayne, the only one left. I think he, I'm exaggerating this, I think, you know, he had a, a bayonet in his, you know, mouth. He had a, like a 50 caliber machine gun, which I don't, I'm not sure, I wasn't, never in the military. I don't think a man, you know, uh, I don't think a man could pick it up. And I'm definitely, you couldn't be holding it up and, you know, firing it. And plus two, the, you know, the, the barrel would heat up and you'd burn yourself like crazy. And I and I think he had maybe a rifle slung over his I mean it was like this is how the you know the movie comes in showing him, you know, fighting, and then it movie but you know you but you know he's dying you know he's going to die, and that's the end of the movie. But be you know encourage Americans to go out, you know, and uh, do their part in every which way. So anyway, it's the end of the movie, and I'm, my father and I had just been sitting there. I was a kid, of course, and uh, my father said something to the effect of uh, they didn't have it so hard or so bad or something like that. And I thought, what? You know, uh, you know he was talking about the ones who were in the military. And then, of course, he was talking, I'm sure, about, you know, about himself, you know. And, uh, and of course, if, you know, if you really got down to it, you know, yeah, there were, you know, everything we see all these movies and we know the history and we know you know the losses and that kind of stuff but you know in reality I don't know out of 
a hundred that were say in the army or something or other. You know, like probably, you know, 20 of those actually were in combat. You know, and the other 80 were, you know, someplace else, you know, guarding something or so. But that was my father. And I, I just thought of, uh, you know, he never said anything like that. But uh, so I kind of thought, I think that explains why we didn't go to family reunions and, uh, uh, well, it wasn't family reunions. It was Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, now having said that, I had a reason for that. Oh, well, one of my earliest memories, well, when my father came, well, when my father and mother and I, we came back from California, uh, and the military, was, you know, was coming home from World War II, uh, I think housing was a problem. So my father and one or more of his brothers who were, had been in the military, uh, my, they built a Quonset hut, a metal thing that the military would build in various locations, you know, for, you know, office space or sleeping space or whatever, you know. And I guess my brothers knew, you know, my father was known too because my father was a welder and a portal maker and, you know, blueprints and the whole thing. But anyway, I, I remember being around a little bit and uh, around a few of my Howard cousins that were in my age, you know, age group. And remember, you know, that thing was built. And then I remember uh, one night and the Quonset hut was, you know, I guess I could do a search of Quonset hut, couldn't I? Except I can't spell Quonset hut. Anyway, um, I remember I got woke up because my Aunt Willie had called Betty, my mother, and, and crying and upset or whatever, and she had uh, Billy, my cousin that was a y year younger than myself, and her husband, my mother's brother. Is this getting complicated? When he drank, he I think he punched and hit and did, you know, stuff like that. That's more than thinking, you know. But I remember being woke up and us going someplace to meet, you know, Willie and uh, Billy, you know. And then I guess my mother, or, or maybe my dad too, I'm not sure if they talked to Bill, her husband, or what the thing was, but I, I knew that, you know, there was problems in the family. So, um, now I get up to the subject. <laughs> um, I was dropped off there one time to spend the, uh, the night and uh, I got there and my mother, you know, left. She just dropped me off and she left. And, uh, you know, Willie was, you know, there to, you know, to greet me and everything like that. And she said, oh, you know, uh, Billy's not here. He's over at the YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association. And, uh, and uh, he's swimming. You should go over and, you know, go swimming with him, just, you know. And I said, well, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't bring a swim trunk. And she said, oh, no, the, you know, they, their swimming trunks are not, not allowed. So you can go on over there. So the thing that popped in my mind, I'm thinking I was like 10 years old. You know, I never, like I've mentioned before, I was an only child. And uh, I had never seen in real life a naked person. I never ever saw my mother and father naked. Um, 
I, I didn't know how to swim, and I don't know how to swim now. Uh, but anyway, what popped in my mind was, I'll get to see a naked person. Because the only thing I had seen, like, there was a couple uh, big stores, Montgomery Wards and Sears, and they sent out catalogs. Well, you know, they had, I think, a big one maybe twice a year, a winter one and a summer one or something. And then I mean, they might have sent out little flyers occasionally, so there would be... But I can remember back when I was 10 or before that or whatever, uh, when that would come, I would, as soon as it would come, I would flip open, let's say, the Sears catalog and go to uh, women's clothing and go to like panties and uh, that whatever and you know brassieres or bras or whatever and of course there wasn't any nudity you know but I'd look at that and uh, then I'd, I think sometimes then I would go to like uh, girls you know like appropriate my age you know whatever I'd go and see them in the panties or whatever that was the close you know I had I didn't there wasn't any nudity to be found this is before the internet, and plus I went to Catholic, uh, you know, Catholic schools, and I, so anyway, I was walking over quickly, you know, to, uh, because she, you know, Willie said, you know, just go that direction and you'll see it, the YMCA. So I was walking that way as quick as I could because I wanted to get there in time to see nudity, and, uh, By the way, as I'm going through, you know, now, Willie, you know, they were, they, all I, they were like poor. I mean, we weren't rich, but they were poor. I mean, they weren't living on the street or anything like that because Willie did things. And, and her husband, you know, Bill, uh, when he did work, he he did tire gro gro uh, grooving, which back then was big, which I think, which I know now is, I'm sure, illegal, you know, but you have, an, you have old tires, and these people who did that would, like, I think they took a, like something like a hot iron thing, to, you know, like a soldering iron, it wasn't a, you know, they had special tools, and they would put, make the, uh, grooves on the tire deeper, you know, and it looked like they had a new, you know, he did that. And then he was also good at math and blueprint reading, and so he also did like a layout work. If you, and at that he was good, but he'd get hired into some place, and they would say, oh, wow, he can, you know, because what those people did was, you know, you would lay out jigs, and then work that was being done, whatever was you know being manufactured, whatever. Uh, let's say a, a wrought iron table or something. You know, you would lay the they, the jig would be made. Then you just the people would just lay the parts in there, and then somebody would weld you know weld it or whatever they had to do, screw it together, whatever they had to do. Of course, those things got you know could be complex. And he was good at that. He was good at some other things, except well, he was good at drinking too. Uh, but Willie then did stuff uh, to supplement, you know, go to the church and she would do stuff and then there would be things, clothes donated and and uh, stuff just, and then for years uh, they eventually moved to Oklahoma and I forget the, and the headquarters of the Poppy Association, whatever that veterans thing they made poppies, and on Veterans Day or something, uh, they weren't real flowers, but you know you would donate money to the Veterans Association, and they would give you a poppy that you can, you know, you wear. And she was, I guess, a hell of a worker, and she worked at that and was paid, you know, you know, for years doing that, and I think. 
I'm sure they had, like, when they needed a lot of people and they didn't, but she was so nice and so good and so skilled at what she did that they, like, I think kept her on. But, uh, so anyway, I was, uh, okay, I was heading over to the YMCA to see naked people. Oh, so at this point, I was thinking, and I, that was the thing in my brain until, you know, fairly recently, it would be before 2010, I'm not sure how back it, it went. I thought because that you could not wear a swimsuit, you had to be naked at the YMCA, I thought that was because the people in that area were poor and maybe couldn't afford swimsuits or some could and some couldn't so they wanted that's what I thought and then I was surprised when I found out the truth back I don't remember when exactly it, you know it was but uh, so anyway I was on the way over to get there as quick as I could didn't want to miss seeing my first naked person um, and this kind of a, you know, I was kind of skinny. Uh, not as skinny as I got later on, but I was kind of skinny. And, and, and I, I think he might have been Puerto Rican or Spanish or something like that in a long time. And he, like, stops me. Who are you and, you know, where are you going? I guess he knew I was like a new kid, you know, maybe you could tell, I don't know. And... And I said, well, I'm, I'm here, I'm see, come to see my cousin and spend the night. And, and he said, who's your cousin? And I said, uh, Billy Stallsworth. He says, oh, I know Billy Stallsworth. He's a friend of mine. He says, uh, you know, oh, are you Jimmy? And I said, yeah. He says, oh, he's told me about you, that you are, uh, what was it? MP, or anyway, box, box or Golden Glove, yeah. He, you know, he says, he told me you were a Golden Gloves boxer. And I was saying, oh, oh, I mean, a Golden, no. And <laughs> one punch and I'd have been, you know. And so then this guy was my buddy. And about that time, Billy, you know, came along. I didn't tell this, you know, he was a boxer too, you know. I didn't tell him, no, I'm not a Golden, you know. My cousin's been lying, you know, I knew better than that. And anyway, then Billy came and, Damn, I thought, oh. So anyway, then I spent the night, you know, and I, I think right be, before we got got to his place and back, to, I think I said, you really there swimming naked? Yep, swimming naked. You, you, you don't wear no, no, don't wear a swimsuit. But I didn't say to him, I'm not sure he would know, you know. I didn't say to him, is that because you're poor? I wouldn't say something like that. So, uh, when I was doing written blog things before I, you know, started doing videos. Well, I did. I was also doing videos. I was doing streaming video myself before before anybody else. Just about. You know, you can't. You know, you can't say that because there's always somebody. No matter what it is, I don't care if you're the Wright brothers or if you're invent. You know, you're Bell and you're inventing the telephone or whatever. If you say you're first you always find out, no, somebody else was, you know, somebody in France or somebody in Russia or somebody, you know. So, but when I started streaming video, I didn't see anybody else streaming video. I mentioned this except for there was a site on the Internet, not the World Wide Web because it didn't exist. There was a site they had a camera pointed at a coffee pot in their office. And there was another business that had a... Uh, camera aimed at a vending machine and that was it and then when I was streaming video I've told you about this so I won't go into it much uh, people were coming and saying this is a video and I, you know no this is this is live no it's not and then that happened you know hold up two fingers or or you know put your hand on top of your head or something like something like that and then they'd be oh my god this is real, a real person. I've never seen a real person, you know. Um, 
So, uh, so anyway, I was blogging, and at some point, I know it's before 2010 because I mentioned that here, nude swimming. Whoops, okay, you can't see that. Okay. Uh, I mentioned here, I posted in Show Me Blog back some time ago about nude swimming at the YMCA. The blog post gets a lot of traffic each day. It has had a lot of comments. Many of the people comment that it never took place. Uh, it was it was normal and standard for boys swimming at the YMCA to swim nude. It was also normal at many schools across the United States. And I put here, many people just cannot believe that such a thing took place. It just shows how crazy things have come now in the United States with sex, nudity, sin, and religion. This is before things really got crazy, you know. Um, I said, I just noticed in the Wikipedia now that there's an article, Nude Swimming. Let me see if I can click on that and open in a new window. Okay, so here that is. I think I had that in my bookmark, in a way. Uh, so I'll put a link to this below, but this talks about... My main thing was that, uh, yeah, I think this is... And uh, I'll put the link to this. People, I think in other countries, Europe and places like that, nude swimming and other type of things weren't uh, but here in the United States our Puritan heritage and our <laughs> hung up people Anyway, I blogged about this, and I got tremendous numbers of comments from people here in the United States saying, that never happened. And I was surprised. Now I wouldn't, with her. <laughs> this kind of shows, you know, but it shows how bad things are, you know. No, it didn't happen. And then I, like, you know, blogging, you know, yeah, or answering back in an email. Yeah, it, it happened. It it wasn't just the YMCA, a Young Men's Christian Association, that their swimming pool, males had to swim naked, and the reason was, that was given was, that the at that time the aquarium filters uh, were not what they are in modern times, and they couldn't handle uh, the. The, the stuff that was in the swimsuits uh, would clog up the, the thing, filters. But the, there was people, no, it did not have, and I even remember uh, when I was working, I was working hospital security, I remember that there was a, a guy at this one hospital that was, he was big, we were, I was big into computer, at that time I think he was big into Apple computers. And then at some point they, they he spent a lot of money on his Apple computer, and uh, I had an IBM compatible computer, you know. Uh, we would argue back and forth, not really argue, but just, you know, about which was better and that kind of stuff. He was strictly an Apple Apple person. and But anyway, they, they went, Apple went to a new type of, and it was not compatible. They, it was a new Apple computer and they didn't say, okay, this is, you know, it was like, we've started a new Apple computer. And he was pissed, and then he switched over to, you know, the computers that I, the real computers that I, you know, that I was using. But we talked about computer type stuff and everything, and I talked a little bit about my uh, blog and stuff like that. And then I mentioned this, I remember mentioning this, and he, and he was, a. Uh, it turns out, you know, of course, with time, he was a uh, hardcore Republican at the beginning of it. I hope he didn't get as crazy as the rest, but he probably did. Because I remember, you know, probably after 2010, but, you know, going into work and uh, I might say something. And I wasn't doing a, it wasn't a political thing. Uh, 
I'd say, oh, did you see the article, uh, that article about such and such? And then he'd say, no, I didn't see that. And I'd say such and such, you know, and he'd say, now, nah, that's fake news. Now, what, what do you mean fake news, you know? And he says, did you see that on CNN? And I said, well, I don't know. I, I watch uh, all the news, because at that, that time I had cable, you know, coming in. And uh, I said, I don't know. And he said, it's fake. And he, w he wouldn't believe it. It was, you know, a scientific study done on something or other. And it, that was so. But uh, these people, I just couldn't get over the thing that these people were adamant. It never happened. It happened at s schools all across the United States. In religious, you know, in Baptist areas and uh, whatever, nude swimming, you know, and uh, it it went on till uh, let's see. Anyway, I'll put a link to these uh, let's see before the YMCA. Before the YMCA began to admit females in the early 1960s, swimming trunks were not even allowed in the pools, and high school swimming classes for boys sometimes had similar policies, citing the impracticability of providing and maintaining sanitary swimming gear and clogging the swimming pools, filtration systems with lint filters from the swimsuits. These practices were common because of perception that there was nothing wrong or sexual about seeing members of the same gender in the nude, especially in these indoor contests among equal in birthday suit uniforms. Anyway, I'm not going to... Uh, now, here are some comments. Let's see if we have... Here's somebody who says, uh, We boys... Uh, happily swam nude at Charles Hartman Jr. High School in Houston, Texas in 1971. They did not say it was the fibers in the suit, but the chlorine in the locker room. But we did not mind nor care. It was fun and normal at the time. My own sons and, fr and uh, friends' sons and nephews cannot believe this as I cannot believe that they no longer shower together after P.E. Uh, this person here says, I was uh, very thin, in fact, with skin and bones. I made, I made sure I did not go out for any sports or anything that was going to have me end up in a locker room. I took military, so that took care of the P.E. By the way, that's the same. I, I didn't go to a military school. I went to a military high school, uh, full-time ROTC, but I got out of, which was fine with me because I was, I mean, I'm mean, i sure I bet I was thinner than this guy, because uh, my being so skinny kept me out of getting into the military, and I wanted to be in the military, uh, but I had the same, um, when I realized I didn't have to, and I never, so I never went out for, and I didn't have to because the ROTC took care of the physio, physical ed requirement. And so this, he says, I find it strange that people do not believe that kids swam nude at the YMCA and at schools. You may have seen a comment or two saying that the photos are fake. I had people leaving comments like, the, you know, yeah, Jim, you made, these are fake photos. Uh, let's see. Uh, This guy says, but this is news to me. Are you saying that kids do not have to shower at school or that schools have stalls in stall for each kid to shower? No big shower room. Americans have some big sexual hang-ups, that's for sure. And, uh, anyway, the comments just go on and on. A whole bunch of people you know, respond, different people responded and commented. But the other people, 
refused to believe that this ever happened. And remember, YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association, they had places set up all over the United States, you know, for young, you know, men's Christian, you know, they were, you know, spreading their, you know, their gospel, uh, their uh, whatever, wasn't like Jim Jones or anything, it was, you know, and uh, they were the ones who, and then schools followed, oh, that's what I wanted to mention too. Uh, let's see. I'll put the link to it. Um, I'm not going to read these things to you. But, you know, here are some stories and um, things about it. And I, you know, I put some of this information into I, my thing when I went back to answer these people from my, you know, blog, when I went back to uh, answer the situation, and I, and then when they said, no, that never happened uh, in the United States, no, that, that would not happen, and so then I put uh, some pictures, just a few, two or three or four or something, and of course in the pictures, I, I got them out of, well, they were out of like a newspaper, and, you know, they, uh, we're not talking high definition here or anything, so you really couldn't see anything. I mean, you know, you could, uh, but people said, I uh, definitely had not, <laughs> this is not one of the pictures, you know, that I, I would have put, well, I would have if, it, if I had seen, you know, if it was available, but, um, I showed pictures from the newspaper, you know, in my rebuttal when people were saying, when a whole bunch of people were saying, never happened. That's just, you know, just never happened in the United States, or, or they're probably saying anywhere, you know. And uh, so, um, I think it is the same. No, I think I can delete this one. Because I don't think I'm not going to put the link to this because it doesn't look like it shows very much. Until, let's see, this might be, no, okay, this I think is a different one. Yeah, so I'll put the link to this. Anyway, and this is before, I think, the fake news craziness that we have now. Uh, what else did I want to say? Anyway. Oh, but at some point, and it's slightly before this, I think, at some point, that was the first, because I, didn't, I just went to a Catholic school. We didn't have swimming pools. <laughs> Not even in high school, yeah. Maybe they did have a swimming pool at De La Salle. Did they have a swim team? I don't think they did. Uh, but uh, I, that was when, at, at some point in this thing, when I'm doing this story, and then the, the information came up, then it was like, oh, and that showed, and I was, and a, definitely an adult, you know. Uh, that's the first time, oh, that YMCA over there by my, uh, where my cousin Billy lived, they didn't, it wasn't that the area was a poor neighborhood and they didn't want kids to have to purchase, you know, a swimsuit or something. It was because of just their policy and the thing about their their filters and their equipment and that type of stuff. So that shows you how even I didn't. Uh, but I don't think I'd have been, because I I am sure I knew that uh, farm kids, surely you know, surely farm kids would go down to the pond, you know, and meet and skinny dip, you know, that type. I wasn't that stupid. 
but now these, but these, and so I'm sure it would be worse now uh, that uh, people say, no, it, this did not happen in the United States. Yes, it ha oh, that's what I was going to mention. Oh, I think, maybe, let me see. In some of the movies, and I couldn't find all of them. Okay, I put some over here, so. Uh, let me minimize this. Okay, um, what I was looking for here was, because there's some movies, modern day movies. Okay, this is internet uh, movie database. Okay, I think uh, I'm not. Gonna, I'll put a link to this if it's not, if it's needed. Okay, here's. Okay, now wide awake. There's no nudity or not, no mention of that. But that is an excellent movie. I love that movie, Wide Awake. Uh, Heaven Help Us. That's one. And I remember there's a scene in there where the uh, Catholic school and all the boys are lined up naked to go into the swimming pool. Anyway, I'll put a link to all this and uh, welcome your comments.